Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday afternoon here in Australia, market down again now under that $2.1 trillion. So things looking pretty uh, sort of hectic and scary at the moment. Overall, uh, not looking great, but look, Bitcoin has risen a little bit. It got down to 44000 it was earlier, so it's up to forty-five. Now, will that hold or not? Ugh. Hard to know. Again, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if this is going down to 42,000 with maybe a flash wick, you know, going way down into the 37s, 38,000s. I think that's definitely possible. Whether it's going to happen or not, I'm not exactly sure. And as always, I'm not offering you financial advice. This is just my personal opinion. But as we can see, under 2.1 trillion, not great. BTC dominance still sitting under 41,000 though. So people aren't exactly piling back into Bitcoin uh, because the altcoins are getting a little bit uh, slashed up as well, because some are still doing all right. Volume down, again, to be expected, and gas prices have come down a little bit as well. And uh, I've got a story that might kind of play uh, into that as well. But let's have a look. Again, basically a red and things getting brutalized. I mean, 10% for polka dot, that really hurts. But look, Luna still up 30%. So some pumping, some dumping, uh, a very crazy market at the time all right what's done well though we can see that luna's got 30 percent there so going on an absolute tear yep the biggest mover quant making a nice move as well avax e-gold uh elron um making a move algorand been doing quite all right but what you got to remember is you can come back tomorrow and some of these may well have dumped as well so there really is a lot of uh, chop soaring action sort of going on but again we need to remember generally uh, this is coming down but we're still holding above the two trillion dollar mark whether that can hold uh, for the rest of this weekend <laughs> that'll be very interesting I'm not going to be surprised if this goes under two trillion again and look there is a possibility that we are actually in a bear market because we set a lower high before it rolled over now, again, not trying to put FUD out there. I don't think we are, but it's still possible that we are. So let's go and have a look at the charts and we'll see what I mean. Well, actually, let's have a look. What was hit the worst? So we've seen the gains. What about the losses? Because we got a couple of nice gains there uh, and then really we're getting into the stable coins. So there wasn't a whole lot of gains, again, to be expected considering the market's down. Oh, Cello, uh, ICX, Phantom, Arweave, Perp, IOTA, Telcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Safe Moon. I mean, this just continues to uh, get absolutely brutalized. <laughs> if there's anyone left in Safe Moon, yeah, I feel for them. Theta Network down, Zill, V Chain, you name it. A lot of coins have really been going down. So let's go and have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Now this is on the daily. So again, we are well out of this upwards trending chart. Well, not well out, but we're definitely out. And as we can see, it does look like it's going lower, but nothing too drastic. It feels like this was the big sell-off. So again, maybe we sort of come down and we're going to come all the way down to 42,000. Definitely possible. Like I said, and we see a big wick like this one that maybe flashes all the way down into the $38,000, $37,000 mark. And I wouldn't be surprised if that is big, uh, the big end of town are going to try and push it down low again to get another good entry point. Now, I don't think this is all market manipulation. I think that definitely is. And now what we see here is a lot of retail panic, uh, retail people just panic selling. That's, that's what this kind of stuff is. This is what you see from retail panic selling. This is definitely uh, coordinated by big, big players. Now, again, they've probably been buying Bitcoin uh, a little bit over the last few weeks. Uh, to dump it, to have a big bag of cash to try and pick it up at, again, maybe below 42000 maybe 38, sort of 37-ish thousand dollar mark. I'm not saying that is what they're doing. I'm just saying that wouldn't surprise me. But what this could look like is a dead cat bounce. Here was our high, came down, set the low, came up, set a new high, and now maybe we're coming for another low. That is definitely possible. I don't think that's what's happening, but look, I didn't think it was going to do this either, so never take what I say, again, as financial advice, it's just my personal opinion, but I want you to have a look at the date, 11th of September, 
So obviously that's a pretty poignant date uh, in world history, but more so American history, uh, 9-11, but more so the month, September. I want you to keep that in mind. All right. The Board 8 Yacht Club NFTs have sold in total for $24 million. So they've all been sold and they went for $24 million. So NFTs... I mean, they were just absolutely crazy. But what you need to remember is really this whole NFT space, it was mainly the big end of town that was playing in it. They were really pumping up the prices and buying things for yeah, even more sort of crazy prices because even if you could find a cheap uh, NFT, gas fees on Ethereum were absolutely horrendous. I think Board 8 Yacht Club might have been on Solana. I'm not 100% sure. I get the feeling like they were still uh, on Ethereum, but those kind of fees were just, yeah, it was making it very hard. And any NFTs that came out early, I mean, they were yeah going up in price very, very quickly. But here's another story. OpenSea's NFT volume is down 50% after monumental surge in August. So is the NFT market starting to cool off? I definitely think it is, but I think the whole market is cooling off and let's go over here to the monthly chart we are in September it's red at the moment it still may end up finishing green we'll wait and see but what was it last September what was it the September before what was it the September before that and what was it the September before that so this is the Binance it doesn't go back any further but I think since Bitcoin's inception it's had eight out of 12 September's have been red months, have been downtrending months. Where are we now? In a downtrending month. Again, this could turn around. We're not even halfway through. This could absolutely turn around, but maybe September's going to be a bit red before we fire up. But hence why some people think this could be a bit of a dead cat bounce. Here, hit the high, came down, hit a high, and then came down. We all obviously know what happened here. This was back in March uh, last year, so that was the big cr everything crash happened then. But even this low would have been lower than that. So that is essentially a dead cat bounce. But then that was really, you know, you could say that was kind of the bottom because then look at the run we went on now. So is this going to be a bit of a dead cat bounce or is this going to be sort of a bit of a correction with a bit of a correction within that? before we then you know shoot to those old all-time old highs that's what i'm thinking is going to happen i think september could be a little bit bearish i don't think we go too much lower but look if we do really start to go lower then everything seriously has changed and all the old models are out the window they're never exactly the same anyway that old saying you know History doesn't often repeat itself. No, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often does rhyme. Something along those lines. And generally, September's have been bad. Uh, so it stands to show, I guess, that this one will probably... Not bad, but they're red months. Anyway, they don't do too well. So maybe that is it before we start to go higher. Because if this was it, this is the smallest bull run in history. But here's one of the, re one of the reasons why I don't think this is a dead cat bounce and we're going to roll over. Switzerland's six exchange green lighted to launch digital token trading platform. So one of the largest stock exchanges in Europe has received the regulatory green light to release a digital bourse. So again, another place getting into the digital crypto space. These kind of stories are all over. We've been hearing so many of them, it's not funny, but yet people still remain bearish. Why would something, you know, why would these big companies decide to get into this space as it's about to tank? I can tell you right now they won't. There's so much money coming into this space. Are they going to suppress it? As I've said the last couple of episodes, absolutely. I think that's exactly what's going on. They are going to suppress it. So that doesn't mean we can't go down from here. We can, but I just don't think we're going to do big any big epic dump from here. This is the base layer being set. I think the kind of 30,000-ish, $40,000 mark is likely to be the base floor. Not too many people are going to want to sell enough Bitcoin for us to go below here. I'm saying, I'm not saying in the short term it can't come down, 
but I just get the feeling like a really big base is being set, particularly at this kind of high, mid to high 30 uh, to $40,000 range. So 35,000 to 40,000, I get the feeling like that's probably gonna be a flaw. I don't know if we're ever going to go below that. I'm not saying we can't. Again, never financial advice, but so much institutional sort of money and things are happening in this space and it's all started happening around that kind of 35,000 when we had that big crash. It got to 60,000 and outside of, you know, MicroStrategy and Tesla uh, and some of the old older ones, you know, Grayscale and things like that, no big companies were getting in, but now we just hear about it happening all the time and it happened after that big sell-off and it seems like we're just hanging around that again sort of 40 ish thousand dollar mark we got up to 50 again they're going to push it down to try and shake more people out that's what they do before this is going to get ready to go again just my personal opinion here epic uh battle to allow cryptocurrency payments on apple so apple's been denying it wouldn't let it happen well, there's a court case and it, invo it involved Fortnite, the game. So a judge ruled today that Apple can no longer block the use of external payment options in iOS apps. The ruling may enable easier use of cryptocurrency wallets to make payments on iPhones and iPads. I think if this goes through, I wouldn't be surprised if Apple have already kind of seen the writing on the wall and we soon hear that they actually have all this stuff kind of set up. But they've been fighting it for as long as they can because they sit on such a large uh, cash position and they simply don't want cryptocurrency to get out of their way. I'm not gonna be surprised if we don't find out that they have already converted a lot of their cash into cryptocurrencies and also set up uh, payment rails for cryptocurrencies. Again, I don't have any inside information or anything to go by. I'm just saying that wouldn't surprise me, particularly with just the odd way that the markets are acting at the moment. Like I said, I feel like it is being suppressed and suppressed and kept down. It's not acting like it has in previous bull runs, but we'll have to wait and see. But here it says, using cryptocurrency wallets to make payments within Apple's iOS ecosystem could soon become a lot easier thanks to a ruling today in the case between Fortnite developer Epic Games and the iPhone making tech giant. I'm pretty sure they kind of know what's coming anyway and they're fully getting on board. And it wouldn't surprise me if they aren't playing a part in trying to shake the market out and keeping uh, prices low and you know not letting them run. But I do believe they are going to run. I don't think this has been a dead cat bounce at all. Here's another reason why I don't think that. Virginia public pension funds double down on Bitcoin. Two Virginia public pension funds are seeking approval to invest directly in an investment fund that buys Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies and crypto, and crypto derivatives. If given approval by their respective boards, the Fairfax Country Police Officers Retirement System and the Fairfax uh, County Employees Retirement System will invest $50 million in a parataxis capital management fund. Again, all the big end of town can see what's coming. And they are all jostling to, you know, get positions. There's been lots of reports, particularly, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, oh, I'm having a total mind blank at the moment. Uh, American Asian guy uh, wrote a great book. Uh, my dad, uh, rich dad, poor dad, rich uh, Kiyosaki. That's him. He's been saying that a lot of these pension funds are, are going to go bust. They simply won't have the money. Hence, why a lot of them are now making moves into cryptocurrencies because they can probably see the writing on the wall as well, and are worried that they won't have the funds for their retirees in the future. Now, again, don't know that for a fact but I'm just looking uh, at the information that's coming across and putting two and two together. Retirement funds getting into cryptocurrencies, uh, big uh, exchanges and banks getting into cryptocurrencies, countries getting into cryptocurrencies, you name it, it's all starting to happen. If this space wasn't getting ready to really revolutionize finance and explode, why would so many big companies uh, again, governments, banks, and all sorts of things be getting into this space. Yep, there's a whole lot of FUD at the moment. And as I've said, it is just, I, I don't mean to harp on, but I just hope my listeners understand that all this stuff that's going on at the moment, it is the big end of town. They want to have themselves set so they can own and capitalize this. If you're panic selling, 
you've got to do what's right by you but I believe you will find that that is the wrong decision in the long run all investors lose money at some st at some stages in their life they truly do but they usually only lose it long term because they panic sell at the wrong time it is hard to buy low when no one else wants to touch something for you to come in and want to buy that it's really hard and I know I've, I've gone through this myself to try and buy in a bear market is hard I do it very easily now now I'm completely the opposite I love to buy into things when they're going down I see them going down I'm like that is what I want particularly if it's really down because I know it's probably found a bottom now you still need to do a bit of research maybe it's going down because there is truly really bad news and you know it's gone bust and you know technical faults and all that then it's probably going to go to zero be careful don't just buy something because it's going down but I like to buy into things that I, I generally like uh, and definitely have done some research on when they're at low prices because I know when they go up that's when the money's going to be made hence why I put uh, just about all my spare cash in when we went from uh, 64,000 all the way down to 38,000 uh, I bought up Bitcoin I bought up Ethereum I bought up altcoins and pretty much all of them have made returns now not crazy returns yet and I bought a whole lot even before back like I said March 2020 when we had the everything dump I bought in late March uh, early April so not the best uh, time it would have been you know a couple of weeks earlier I literally could have got things for a third of what I did but that's all right I still got in at a good time uh, and then I sold on the way up and again I didn't time it perfectly I sold Bitcoin at um, $47,000 I sold some Bitcoin uh, at $47,000 because I thought it was going to have a retracement at around 50,000 it didn't it kept going and I was like that's all right 52 54 it'll probably do it it didn't I thought oh 58 60 it didn't I thought oh 62 it will and it kept going to 64,000 and I thought I'd missed it I was like I've timed this so bad I wish I hadn't have done that then we all know what happened boom 64,000 down to 30 oh god what was it thirty eight thousand dollars thirty two thousand dollars let's go and have a look it's over here I can't even remember what was the lows there we go got down to around twenty eight thousand sorry I'm ten thousand dollars off and again I sold at forty seven thousand but I bought back in at thirty nine thousand I bought back in at thirty four thousand I bought back in at around sort of thirty two ish thousand dollars and then I started to buy up alts down here as well and look where we've gone this in my opinion it is just a shakeout I hope you are all here for the long-term investment you've been with me on this journey you've understood how to read charts you know sentiment analysis not just TA I believe in TA and I'm definitely not telling anyone to move away from TA but TA is only good until it's not but, you know big movers they can see things coming and they know what it's going to show TA wise and what everyone is then likely to do and they will counter trade it at times not all the time I would say probably a good 60 to maybe 70 plus percent of time TA is right and again that's just personal opinion I'm not basing on that on anything because I, I can only go by what I've sort of used TA for and a lot of the time it's right but definitely I'd say a good almost a third of the time uh, it's completely and utterly wrong so I don't just use TA I use TA sentiment uh, you know what's going on in the world all sorts of things you've got to collect all that information to really help you try and navigate this space because that's what the big end of town do they don't just use TA either they use TA a lot but they also counter trade what TA says it's about to do if they're a big enough player and have a big enough hold and again they want to go short when everyone's going long to make all the money they are things that you need to keep in mind to try and hopefully be able to navigate this space better again and that's more trading investing find a good project wait for a dip buy in don't just dump all your money in though or you can if that's what you want to do I don't recommend that you know you might get lucky and just buy in at the very low and it never goes back to that price and if that's the case congratulations to you that was a really good decision but just be careful about doing that because what happens if you buy in and then it goes another 50 percent lower you've got no cash sitting on the sides layer into everything layer in as you're buying in and then layer out as you're exiting as well that's the best advice I can give you but that is just personal advice 
All right, that's it for me. Not a lot happening on the weekend. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if we come down to 42,000. You see a flash week that maybe pushes down to 30, uh, sort of 8, 37. I'm not saying that what is that's what is going to happen. It just wouldn't surprise me. But I don't think this is a dead cat bounce, uh, i.e. that was the top. This is a... Um, uh, the, the bounce before we go uh, much lower there was too much institutional buying getting in at these prices and they're not buying Bitcoin at 30,000 uh, sorry 32,000 35,000 and 40,000 to sell it at 52,000 they really aren't will they sell some to take profits and long and short and then buy back in and all the rest of it yeah but they're not doing a big mass dump from here and we need to remember, this is where most of the institutional money uh, got in. That got in. We've still got a lot of institutional money sitting on the side. And they won't get in until regulation comes. So they're things you need to remember. I really do think if you're buying between 32 or let's say sort of 28,000 and really 42,000, I think this is probably going to be the base. I'm not saying we can't have some kind of flash crash or something that maybe never goes lower, but I think this might be the base uh, for future. Uh, again, you know, if Bitcoin makes it to 70,000 as the all-time high, then no, I think we absolutely can lose this. I'm just not sure I see that happening. Too many big players getting in the space, buying up too much. Why are they going to want to buy at 30,000 to push it to 70,000? to dump it all in the hopes that maybe they push it down low enough uh, and get back in, knowing that there's going to be other possible institutional buyers that may come in before that. They just won't. They will absolutely dump some, uh, but I just don't think they're going to dump massive amounts and take that gamble. Yeah, they make, might, might make a lot of cash, but they already know where cash is going. Cash is dying. It's been dying for a long time. I don't think it's going to die anytime soon. I think we've probably still got another decade or two or more of cash, but I think it's buying value over that long term goes down. Short term, we might see some, uh, again, a bear market where the dollar value kind of goes up uh, against you know Bitcoin and all the rest of it. But long term, I just can't see the dollar surviving and outpacing uh, Bitcoin. Hence why I put my money where my mouth is. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment considering overall we're down. But if you've outplayed the market, well done to you. Oh, excuse me. And I'll see you next time.